Okay, hello everyone and welcome back to another Mortal Kombat 11 discussion video. Well, as of me making this video, the beta has officially ended a day ago. Everybody, well, I say everybody, everybody who pre-ordered the game had a chance to try out the game, try five characters, couple of stages, get a feel for the game, get a feel for the online. And yeah, in this video, I am going to give you my thoughts on the game. Now, before we start out, I have to give a disclaimer. NRS has basically said that the version of the game we got to play in the beta, which is the same version of the game as we got to play in the stress test, which I wasn't a part of, but kind of a lot of pros and big names in the community were a part of, is an early version of the game. So even since then, there have been a couple of changes to the game that have been confirmed by NRS. Probably the biggest one being the dashes. A lot of people kind of complain that the dashes feel useless and NRS said that they will be addressing that. So again, in this video, if I'm pointing out a negative, I'm pointing it out with the disclaimer that it might be already patched. So, you know, don't get too salty with me. Uh, I'm just going to give you my honest opinion, kind of what I liked and what I didn't like. So yeah, let's get into it with what I liked. Overall, I am loving this new style of MK. When they said that they were going to focus on a slower, neutral kind of playstyle, focusing on kind of footsies and spacing and all that, I was really kind of worried because, well, Injustice 2 happened, which was essentially a zone fest. Uh, I played a ton of the game, I enjoyed my time with Injustice 2, but because of that playstyle, the focus on being extremely defensive, uh, the game got boring very quickly for me, both to play and to watch. However, I am happy to report that MK11 is not like that at all. Yes, the game is slow, however, the aggressive feel and you just kind of going in on your opponent and being on the offensive is still there. You just have to be a little bit more mindful of what moves you throw out. Gone are the days where you can just run into the face of your opponent, combo them with near unreactable full combo overheads and lows, and just end in a standing reset and rinse and repeat. I feel like that kind of playstyle was very frustrating in MKX, especially when the game first came out, it was a mess, they got a lot better with it towards the end, and it really looks like they learned their lesson, and this style of gameplay that they're kind of pushing for right now, I would say actually it's most similar to uh, Street Fighter V. And I'm someone who enjoys Street Fighter V casually, you know, I'm not saying I'm particularly good at it, but I enjoy that kind of gameplay. So I feel like people who like that game or any of the SF games are going to be right at home here. The only difference is that you have uh, combo strings instead of single moves. One thing I'm still kind of wondering is how this mechanic will translate over to the casual audience. Overall, I was a little apprehensive at first, but after I played it, I think I'm no longer apprehensive because when I thought about it, what is more off-putting? Being comboed and just guessing wrong and not even being able to do anything or just kind of playing. And again, new people can still do well and slowly learning the game mechanics and the concepts of footsies and all that. I feel like a lot of how long this game is able to retain a casual audience is gonna hinge on whether there is some type of decent tutorial mode, which there is a learn mode, uh, which was of course unaccessible for this beta. And the other thing that will really help is the inclusion of a proper ranked mode, which I'll get into later. Overall, the game feels really good online. Now there is a mechanic where you can tell whether people are on a Wi-Fi or on a wired connection, which kind of gives a really good indication and allows you to filter out potential Wi-Fi warriors and people with bad connections. I would say that throughout my three days with the game, I had maybe four really terrible connections where there was a significant delay and I felt like and I felt like I was hindered by the actual delay. The game looks good. One thing I'm really surprised about is that they really stepped up their animations. I feel like the animations in this game are way better than they've ever been in NRS games. You know, their animations were always a weak point, but I really do feel a significant improvement in this game with the animations. All right, and with that, let's get into some of the things that I kind of noticed which were more negative and some of the things I hope they will change before the final release. As a ton of people have pointed out, the dashes are terrible, again this will be fixed. 
The fallout mechanic is something a lot of people complain about and towards the end of the beta people have figured out kind of ways around it. However, I still am of the opinion that the fallout mechanic defensively is way too strong. You are essentially able to get a full combo punish on your opponent for free if you have two defense gauges. So either your opponent is forced to switch up their combo path, which not every character can do, or cut the combo short and kind of prevent the fallout because of that. That shouldn't be a thing. You shouldn't be forced to cut your combo short because you are afraid of the opponent punishing you for making the right read. I mean, if you get a combo, that means you did something right. Your opponent shouldn't be able to just fall out and punish you for that. I think the fallout mechanic as an idea is not bad. However, I think it should reset to neutral where both players are kind of on the level playing field. Whereas now the player on the defense, the player getting hit gets the advantage immediately. Other than that, the other thing I kind of noticed is the down twos in this game. The down twos are something that people were discussing. Essentially, there is some really weird stuff happening with the down two hitboxes in this game. They are extremely low profiling. I think the reason they did that is to make them better anti-airs. However, this basically allows the down two to be kind of a fuck neutral option, which this game is really kind of shying away from. Essentially, if you do a move that's plus for you, I don't know, just take any plus move, and then you go on to do your fastest move, which is usually your one, which is a high, your opponent is essentially just able to down two under it. The one is not gonna hit because it's a high and the down two places your hitbox extremely low. I hope I'm making sense here. Essentially, it is really easy to down two through stuff where you shouldn't be able to down two through stuff is what I'm saying. This comes with the fact that a lot of characters seem to lack a good mid punish option. So essentially you just have to take like a down four or something to punish a down two or punish your opponent making a mistake. Yeah, the down twos are way too strong. I've seen people avoid projectiles with them, which, you know, if you've been around in MKX, you know that low profiling was really one of the most consistent issues that people complained about. And it was one of the things that was never addressed so I'm hoping that NRS is going to take the option to address the down twos and kind of mess around with the hitbox so that it's not as low as it is now. Another thing I noticed is that there are certain characters and, well, some of these characters are on the worst end of the scale out of the fight that were shown that have a lot of unsafe moves. I mean, sure, if a move is really strong, make it unsafe. However, some characters, <coughs> Scorpion, literally have only one option to make their extremely unsafe moves safe. In Scorpion's case, I'm talking about Misery Blade. Literally, there is nothing you can do outside of a very few options where you will be able to block afterwards and your opponent will be unable to get a punish. This is not good because essentially it forces you to play scared. I mean, sure, this game is defensive. However, every character kind of relies on having some plus moves, some safe moves, some unsafe moves. It's how every character is built up. And some characters, like Scorpion and Jade to a certain extent, are not able to do that at all, which makes them extremely defensive in the face of someone like Cabal, who is much more covered in plus frames. Speaking of characters, some characters are way weaker than others. Again, this might be something that will change. It probably will change by the final release. However, there was a clear tier list by the end of this beta, which was basically Cabal and Scarlet were good, Baraka was good to mid, and most people tend to agree that Jade and Scorpion were not too good. Scorpion, because of the aforementioned uh, lack of any safe option other than Misery Blade, as well as the lack of combo damage. One of the most obvious strange choices is that Scorpion could barely break 30% with his combos for 2 meters, while Cabal could get easily 35% with 1 meter. I mean, sure, not every character is going to have the same amount of combo damage. In a zoning character like Jade, it makes sense. She's focused on a projectile game. Of course, she's not going to have too many combos. However, I think in Jade's case, they kind of overdid it because she has no combos instead of weaker combos. Scorpion is an offensive character, so he should at least be able to get a decent amount of damage. 
if he hits you, you know, Scorpion is kind of focused on whiff punishing, but he has very few ways of capitalizing on that. Other thing is the standing resets. Cabal and Scarlet once again are able to get very easy standing resets while Scorpion has to spend a meter. So, you know, just like kind of weird baffling choices where uh, the character scale is tipped. And of course, fighting games are always going to have a tier. Some characters are always going to be stronger. Here, there is a very, very clear divide, which I hope they will address by the final release. So basically, that's all the gameplay changes I kind of gathered from this beta. Again, it's not too much. Generally, I am happy with the direction that they are taking. Oh yeah, just a couple of more notes towards the end here. People who were worried about zoning, don't be. This game is not a zone fest. It is perfectly possible to counter both of the zoners. Uh, well, I mean, Jade was the only real zoner in this beta and Scarlet was kind of a hybrid, but she had some good projectile options as well as Cabal. It is very easy to counter zoning in this game. Well, I shouldn't say very easy. Still, if you fight against a smart Jade, you are going to have a hard time. However, it is not going to be just two characters standing at the end of the screen trading projectiles. And in terms of what I would like to see added for the final release, one of the things I would like to see is for there to be some punishment for rage quitting. Historically, NRS games have never really had strong punishments for rage quitting. And it would be really good if they finally addressed this for MK11, because even in this goddamn beta, people were rage quitting on me, which is absolutely ridiculous. None of these stats that anyone has gathered here are gonna matter in the final game. So what the fuck is the point of rage quitting? I've asked that several times when I streamed the game, we had some rage quitters and off stream as well. It's just really baffling. So I'm hoping that they take the route that every other fighting game takes. Tekken, even Smash Ultimate has punishments for rage quitting and implement something akin to that in MK11. And finally, the last thing I really want is there to be a decent ranked mode. Again, as I mentioned, in this game, it's going to be really easy to distinguish very good players, average players, and newbies. Nothing wrong with that, it's just how fighting games are. However, because of that, because there will be, I think, a clearer divide due to just how the game plays, it would be really great if they added some type of division. I mean, every fighting game has divisions. Uh, you know, Street Fighter has the bronze to, what is it, like... Warlord or some shit like that. Tekken has all the crazy ranks. Dragon Ball Fighters has all the crazy ranks. So it is really time for MK to step up and add ranked divisions as well. I think it will allow everyone to kind of be in their own category. I mean, even now, I was firing up the beta towards the last day where I had like, what, 90 wins or something like that. And I was literally matched against people who had 10 losses and 2 wins and all that so of course this is a beta but for the final game it would be really great to have some ranked separation all right so i think that about is going to wrap up this video hope you guys enjoyed i enjoyed mk11 very much so i have high hopes for this game gonna be really interested to try out all the characters of course none of the characters i'm interested to play in were in the beta but i did have a lot of fun with scorpion even though he's hella unsafe yeah, I'm going to wrap it up here because this is getting way too long. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed and see you next time. Goodbye.